What is up? This is Ninja Geek and in episode four we're going to play. Uh, as a bit of background, uh, I enjoy and have a few games with the um, Warhammer IP or Games Workshop license and these include Forbidden Stars, Blood Bowl Team Manager and Warhammer Quest the Guard card game. I also have a few um, Games Workshop tabletop games such as Blood Bowl and uh, Warhammer Underworlds and I even compete quite regularly with these in tournaments. However, I've never actually played the Warhammer War game, and that includes um, Fantasy or 40k. Uh, so when I recently got a copy of this, Warhammer The Rise and Fall of Amblor, I decided to go over uh, the contents, a solo playthrough, and a review for you guys. Um, the Rise and Fall of Amblor is a game by WizKids uh, set in the Warhammer universe in the Age of Sigmar era. Um, Previously competing factions now come together to uh, rebuild the stronghold of Anvalor whilst simultaneously um, defending it against the savage orcs with their fierce brutes and sneaky grots or the chaos with their followers of corn demanding their blood for the blood god or the scaven with their mass in numbers and the forbidden uh, warpstone um, weapons. Um, so what type of game is it? Well, it's a tower defence game for one to four players and although it does appear to be semi-cooperative, ultimately there is one faction deemed the winner. Uh, this is achieved by gaining influence from building structures, uh, defeating um, enemies and gaining them from abilities from the tiles you've laid throughout the game, with the faction with the most uh, influence at the end of the game being victorious. So let's take a look at the contents and setup first. So as for the setup, it's pretty simple. The first thing we need to do is place the game board in the centre of the table. The game board is double sided depending on the number of players. Uh, so we need to make sure we have the one to two player side face up. These areas in the centre here are for player faction tile placements. And these numbered areas on the side of the board are for enemy tile placements. At the top end of the board, there are areas for 2p and 1p depicted in the lower right corners and that is dependent on the number of players in the game and since we're playing solo we will ignore the areas in this arc uh, for 2p. First thing we need to do is select our enemy and we are selecting the orcs so we select the orc overview tile place it next to the game board here and we then select a war cry tile and there are four of these per enemy in the game and we've selected stomp them dead uh, which is level three and this slots into place here. We then take the enemy tiles and place them in the enemy draw area. And the next thing we need to do is select our faction. There are six factions in the game and we have selected the Hammers of Sigmar. So we take their 20 tiles and place them face down here. Take the top five and draw them into our play area here. If you're not too keen on your starting hand, you are able to take a mulligan, discard those five and draw another five. If happy, take one of the aspect cards for that faction. There are four per faction. We've chosen We Are The Hammer and place it near your draw tile as a reminder of your ongoing ability during the game. Next thing we need to do is place the new city tile board which has areas for the new city tiles, plus um, the influence gained from building those tiles. Normally this is placed to the side of the board, but we'll place it over the 2p area as a reminder not to use those areas in the game. We then place the, the new city tiles, draw the top three, and look at the costs of these uh, tiles. We have a cost of four, a cost of three, and a cost of two. Now these tiles are placed on the new city board in ascending order from right to left, dependent on the cost in gold. So the lowest cost will go on the right, the next, low, next highest there, and the highest cost will be on the left hand side. And when buying these, you'll need to per spend the gold to purchase these tiles to place them on the game board. Um, that faction then gains the influence associated with their tile. However, whilst on the game board, any faction is able to gain the ability of those city tiles. The next thing we need to do is just create a pool area for the influence that will be gained during the game. 
plus an area for the dice pool. As for the setup, that's it. And what we'll do now is just take a closer look at the um, enemy tiles, faction tiles, and the enemy overview cards. For the enemies, we have uh, an overview tile and a war cry tile that's slotted together. Uh, the overview tile will list the numbers and types of units that will be found in the enemy deck um, and also give uh, the average strength of the units in the, that deck as well. The overview tile will give an ongoing ability that says no die may be re-rolled more than once. The um, overview and war cry tile also let you know what happens if you roll a five or a six during the enemy pair phase and here the war cry tile also gives an additional um, ability to the orcs that says faction buildings destroyed um, I will lose one influence. For the enemy tiles it will show the name of the enemy with some artwork and here it will be a fist with a number on and this represents the strength of that enemy uh, that must be reached or exceeded to defeat them during um, a battle. At the bottom of the card it will show um, uh, an ability that can be used for the orc units during the game. So for the faction tiles, each deck is made up of 20 tiles containing a number of units and buildings. The top left corner of each tile represents a resource that must be equal or exceeded in order to place that particular tile. For units, you need to spend manpower, and for buildings, you need to spend stone. Likewise, in the top right corner is a resource that can be gained by discarding that particular tile. Here, discarding this tile gives you manpower, discarding this tile gives you stone. A third resource that can be gained by discarding a card is gold. The centre of each tile has some artwork that depicts whether it's a unit or a building. And if it is a unit, there is an area that shows if it's a ranged or melee attack unit and which die it rolls during the attack phase. The bottom of each tile will have an ongoing bonus or ability that is only specific to the particular faction that that tile belongs to. So we set up for solo play and the object of the game is after the final assault I must have a city tile somewhere on the board. Um, during the game there are a number of phases in each round. Uh, the first is the action phase where I get to place um, unit tiles, building tiles or city tiles onto the board by paying the resource. If I don't do that I can pass. The next thing to do is draw two tiles from my stack. If I've passed in the previous phase, I can draw three tiles. I then enter the prepare enemy phase where you roll a d6. If you roll a one to four, you place an enemy on the area on the outside of the board. If you roll a five or six, you consult your war cry and overview tiled. At any one point, if there are three enemies on any one edge, um, an assault will occur where you turn the enemy face up. My units can attack. Um, the orcs can then advance uh, across the stronghold. Um, if at any one time all of the centre area is filled with my faction tiles, uh, an onslaught will occur where I roll this d6 um, placing tiles until an assault occurs. When this dry, uh, the deck runs dry, um, the final assault will occur um, and then the end game. So to start the game, uh, I first take an action and I am going to discard one, two, three manpower actually no, I will discard two stone to place a church and that church lets me draw tile every time I place a unit so I've drawn two tiles, enemy prepare phase. It's a one, so I can place one tile on any side, any area with the one. Back to my action phase. I will spend two manpower to place uh, the prosecutors here. I get to draw a tile uh, due to this ability and then draw two. Yeah, in the draw phase. Enemy prepare phase, I rolled a four. I'll place the enemy unit there. 
during my action phase I'm going to place the Aether Wings, which cost one manpower. Ooh. Actually, I will spend two gold to purchase the administration center. I'm going to place that. Yeah, I gain two influence for building that, as indicated above the city tile. I can then draw two cards. Enemy prepare phase, it's a three. I'll place a unit there. Now during my action phase, I can Spend resources to to place a tile. If I don't have that resource, I can get rid of any other two um, tiles. So I will remove um, yeah. So that's one stone, the two stone, or one manpower. I'll place this. Here, because I've placed a unit, I get to draw a tile, and then in the draw phase, I can draw a further two tiles. Enemy prepare phase, it's a six. So I now consult my war cry uh, tile, which says that I place one unit on the side with the fewest enemy units. So here, I'll place this one here, um, and then I have to roll again. It's another six, so I do the same. Now, because there is one on each side, I then pick the lowest number, one being the lowest number, so an enemy will be placed there. I have to roll again. It's a one, so we place a tile there. Now, because there's three enemies on this side, there is an assault, so we turn these over. We have got spiders. When these are destroyed, I have to roll a d4. If I roll a one, my, my unit that killed it is destroyed. We have a stone claw. When revealed, all units advance. And this one here is the Gargant, and it destroys all adjacent buildings when um, it is destroyed. So because of this ability here, normally my units would get to attack first, but because of this ability, all the orcs get to advance. And to advance, they just move across the board. So we start with the top. This would advance here. Normally, if I was a melee, I would have to um, take a defense roll. I'm ranged, I can't do that, but I do have an ability that says if I roll a three plus, I can move my unit. I rolled a three, so my unit can move. And I will place my unit um, and we go here. This one will advance and this one will advance. There's no one to attack, so they have to advance again. So my newly bought city tile is destroyed. This moves to here. This is also destroyed and these move. Now I see if I can attack, I can here. I roll a D4 and I have to get a three. I rolled a three, which means that this unit is destroyed. I gain three influence for destroying that unit because the strength was three. However, because it's spiders, I have to roll a d4 and on a one, the unit that I use to destroy that unit is dead. I rolled a three, I'm safe. All units advance. Now, when um, you have an opportunity to attack, you, you have to attack. So again, my Aether Wings are, are first in line, so they will attack here because it's adjacent. However, Diagonally is cast as adjacent as well, so this unit can support, which adds one to the dice roll. I also have an aspect card that allows me to roll one to the dice. Um, so I roll a d4 and I can add two. So I roll two, three, four, it's nowhere near nine, uh, so the enemy survives. Now to reach nine, I would have had to roll a natural four 
which means that it's an exploding die. And because of that, I can then roll the dice again, adding any additional numbers onto that four. Had a roll of four for the second time, you roll again and you keep adding these numbers um, until you wish to stop. Any time if you roll a one, you automatically fail. So I failed there. Um, one thing I haven't done is the um, orc ability says that if a faction building is destroyed, I lose one influence. This one destroyed a, um, uh, a faction building, so I actually lose one influence before he advanced. So I'm down to four. Um, now this unit gets to attack. They can attack here. They have the support here and support here. However, the Aether Wings give an additional support. So I have plus three support on a D6. I roll three. Uh, nowhere near nine. So they advance again. Eighth Wings get to attack with two support. I rolled a two. So that gives me four. Now the prosecutors will attack here with plus one, two, three support. I rolled a five, six, seven, eight. It's still not enough to destroy. Uh, so these just move freely off the board and I gain no influence for them. Now, because there's been an assault, these get discarded and replenished from the deck. So we have a large in costing one, which allows me to draw a tile if I place a unit. We have a magic bazaar that gives me plus one when play, uh, playing magic units. Uh, so plus one manpower and airship trading post, which means that my maximum hand is increased by one. So on my next turn, I've got no units. I do have some gold. So I think I'm going to spend two gold. It's so again the Magic Bazaar, which gives me plus one manpower if it's placed next to a unit. So I'm going to place this here. So it's actually placed next to two units and draw two tiles. Uh, I do gain four influence for building that. Enemy prepare phase, it's a six again. So place one here on the lowest, roll again. It's another six, I only roll sixes in the enemy phase. Um, so again, it's all equal, it goes here and I have to roll again. And now it's a four, so I'll place the next tile here. Uh, back to my turn. I'm going to place this unit with one manpower. Well, I don't need to spend, oh yes I do, because that's only for magic units. Um, I'm going to place the vanguard here. Mm, or, no, I think I'll go here. There we go. Um, well, I'm not too sure. I might actually, no, I am going to go there because um, I get plus one to magic units. Don't have any magic units. Enemy prepare phase to five. So I get to place two tiles as per my overview tile on the side with the lowest numbers. So there's one here and one here, two there and two there. So it has to go on this side because it's the lowest number. So I'm going to place one here and one there. So I reveal them. What do we have? We have grots and they give plus one strength to any other grot. We've got a grot fanatic. Now with the grot fanatic, what we do as soon as it's revealed, we, we, we advance and we don't get to attack. Um, and we roll a d4 and the text here tells us which direction it goes and it will move in any direction until it goes off the board. So the, oh, I'll roll that one again. So the first one is a three. If it's a three, it goes straight forward. We roll a two, straight forward. A one, exactly what I didn't want. It goes this way, it destroys my building. A two. Straight forward. This one can't 
defend because it's a ranged unit. Unit range units can't defend. A two. Straightforward. And roll again. So one. So it moves to the right. Another two. And it finally goes off the board. Because these have got a, a large metal ball on a chain, they're swinging it wildly and they can't really predict the direction they're going to move. I can now move, turn this one over. Um, this one here is, if it is killed, all adjacent units to that unit roll a four, a d4, and on a one there, they're destroyed. Now I have to advance, there's nowhere to attack, so they move. No one to attack, so they move again. So here I'm going to do my ranged attack. And the such ability, if I roll a three plus, that unit can't advance. I rolled a three, um, however, it's destroyed. I gain two influence. Um, here, I roll a d6. I need a four, and I've gained a six. Uh, so this unit is destroyed. I gain four influence, one, two. However, I have to roll a d6. And if I rolled a one, I would have died. I rolled a three, I am safe. Uh, because there's been an assault, we get rid of these, replenish them. So we have a tavern, which is plus one manpower. That's quite handy. We have a College of Magic, which means I can re-roll this tax. And we have a Temple to Sigma, where adjacent units to this temple have plus two defense. Um, I've got no units to place. Um, I actually lose, I just realized I lose a... Um, Oh no, stone, that's okay, it wasn't a building. Um, so I'm going to pay one gold, gain the tavern, I'll place the tavern here. Um, yeah, I'll place the tavern there. Uh, I get two influence for that. I then get to draw two tiles. Um, when you've run out of your deck from drawing, you just turn over your discard pile. There's no shuffling. Um, enemy prepare phase. Again, a six. So this is the lowest one. With the orcs, their special ability just means that very, very quickly you get assaults. Um, and a three, place one here. Uh, so my turn. Nothing really I can do, my, my men are too expensive. I don't have the resources. So what I'm gonna do is discard these. So I'm gonna pass. You can discard any number of cards. I'm gonna discard four. Actually, I'll discard three. And um, because I've passed, I get to draw three. Okay, that's not too bad. Enemy bear phase, it's another five. So this is the lowest side, so I place one here. Uh, during my next turn, I'm going to Hmm. So I'm gonna. I've got one manpower there, one manpower here, one manpower there. Two stone to make another manpower. So that's one, two, three, four. I can now pace my Lord Relictor, who's pretty powerful, and I get to reroll missed ranged attacks for this and adjacent units. So I'm going to place this one 
here. These next to these units. Um, draw two tiles. Enemy prepare phase. It's a four. So there's going to be an attack up here. Um, I place this one here. So we reveal. So we have orc brutes, which says when a leader is attacking. It ignores um, <clears throat> the leader's special abilities. We have Orcar boys get a plus two strength against ranged units. And we have Orc war chances, so all other Orcs have plus one strength. Um, so we follow the direction of the arrow. The arrow moves this way, so we move this way and we can attack. So I've got a ranged, two support. Uh, I need a five because I get, I think it's plus one. Now I've gained a six. I don't need to continue rolling with my exploding die because I've reached that. So I get four. Four influence there. The next attack is here. So it's one D4. Um, that's a seven though. Um, So I don't get any support. I do get to re-roll once. Um, I can't re-roll more than once because of the Orc special ability that says no die may be re-rolled more than once. If I do get three plus, that uh, enemy doesn't advance. So I can move. I've got a three, so it doesn't move, um, but I don't kill it. This Orc then advances. Uh, the next is the attack phase again. Oh, I could have re-rolled that I would, with this ability. So I re-roll to two, so nothing happens. Um, now, because I re-rolled and it's a two, this one does advance. So I now have to do a melee attack, which again is a D4. I've gained a three, which means that unit is destroyed. So after the advance phase, I can attack again. So this unit can attack. Um, so for this one, it's a D8. And the strength is seven, but I do get to re-roll. If I roll a six, that's not enough. I can re-roll. It's an eight. So this unit is gone. I gain five influence for that. This one advances. Nothing else stopping this one from moving off the board. So I didn't do too bad there. Um, next phase is, oh, there's been an assault. So again, replenish. So we have a city hall, which gives me one gold. We have a stronghold to so adjacent units get plus two to attack roll, so that's pretty nice. Um, and we have End of Assault, uh, it's an amphitheater, I get plus one influence for every unit on the board. Um, so I'm not gonna do anything for the minute, I'm gonna pass, so I'll draw three. Uh, enemy prepare phase. The six, add one to the lowest, which means now there is going to be an assault. Five, add one to the lowest. Uh, the lowest number, so it's going to be here. Um, so I'll place one there. Now, because I've placed the last tile, um, what happens now is we go clockwise from this area, filling up these gaps. So we'll fill one here. We'll fill one here. Now this is completely full. These get discarded and we don't get the influence. And now for the final assault, these will all attack and I have to try and make sure this lands or stays. Uh, I'm not gonna do it, I don't think. So we have got spiders when killed. Uh, roll a d4 on a one, my unit is killed. 
This is an Orc Mega Boss. And basically that when it advances, it just plows through everything. Uh, it doesn't stop. You can't attack it. Um, it will just make um, defense rolls after the advance phase. Here is all adjacent units must roll a one if it is destroyed and they are also killed. And that includes the Orcs. And on this one here, adjacent units have to attack that. Um, but there's no one there. So what I'm going to have to do here is get this one to attack here and I need a six um, to, to then get the exploding guy. And I've got a one automatic fail. Nothing happens. So all that happens is they advance. On a three plus I can move. I've rolled a four. So I'm going to Oh, actually, I could have um, re-rolled there. So I'll re-roll first using his ability. That's a three, it's still missed. So now I'll do the roll for the move, the six. That's what I wanted just now. He gets to move to here. Now, this unit just plows through. It's destroyed my city tile, plows through here. I can't do any attacks I have to defend it's going to hit here I can now do a ranged uh, sorry a melee attack to try and defend myself I need to get a six again I've got a six that's my exploding die I now need to roll and make sure I get a two plus and I've got another six so this orc has died I gain two influence for it uh, this one goes and this one goes back to the attack phase I can attack here. I now have an assist and the support. So I've rolled another six. Where were these earlier? I get three influence and I put two back to get five. Uh, this unit can now attack here. So I need a two plus. I've rolled another six. So I gain two influence. And this orc can then move across unimpeded because there's no one to attack it. And there you go, that's the end of the game. Um, I've lost the game because um, my city tile was destroyed, so I have no city tiles on the board at the end of the final assault. Um, with the Orc Special Abilities, what this does is if you're all five or sixes, it just inundates the edges with, um, with Orc tiles, so that what happens is two or three turns in a row, you will get an assault which completely depletes your um, your units and buildings on the board. Um, so that was, a, that was a bit frustrating, that was. Um, I managed to get sixes after that was destroyed, but had I get a six first, likelihood is I would have won the game. Um, so yeah, that's the end of the game. Um, unfortunately, I've lost. Um, so now we're just going to take a quick review. So the uh, game has ended and I've lost. Um, I forgot to mention during the video that um, I actually gained 38 influence, um, which actually has no meaning in solo play. You just use that as a benchmark um, for my faction against that particular enemy and that level. Um, now, I've played this a few times solo and multiplayer. Uh, so what do I think? Well, first, we'll take a look at the contents. So the contents are pretty decent. Each faction and enemy tile is cut to a unique shape um, for that particular group. The tiles are decent thick card. The artwork for the units and enemy tiles is really, really nice. Uh, the individual faction and enemy tiles have their own specific colour and these are generally quite vibrant and bright. And that does look pretty awesome when a multiplayer board starts to get filled with enemy and faction tiles. However, one of the factions uh, and the Scaven enemy tiles do have a similar gold brown uh, colouring, which can be difficult to distinguish. Um, regardless, uh, this dumbly, uh, generally does look pretty good during the game. So as for the gameplay, it's okay. It's not as heavy as I wanted it to be or what I think it should be. Whether playing solo or multiplayer, you're really just building up your strength where more than likely it's going to get destroyed in the uh, next assault. You can set up a good defence on three sides of the board, only for an assault to be on, on the other side uh, due to uh, a bad dice roll or an unlucky draw of the enemy, and it just runs rampant. Um, this was seen in my previous 
play where uh, four of the enemies um, at the final on the on the opposite side of the board and the one with the city tile lined in front of it was uh, a boss that was difficult to stop you then build it up only for it to be knocked down again and as time goes by um, assaults become more frequent meaning by the time the final assault arrives the board is generally depleted anyway um, I think it's missing something but I'm not quite sure what it is um, perhaps some non-faction ally tiles um, of, an, of an additional type for a uh, tile drafting system would be pretty nice. The way combat works is pretty good um, with different die for ranged and melee and it depends on how much the unit costs but it's rare to have your best units on the board um, or, or the, the city gut tiles that cost five gold as they rarely ever get the resources to spend for them. If you do there's a 25% chance that they're going to be on an area of the board um, where you didn't protect things um, like the units or the city tiles. And one other thing that does frustrate me is firstly that the tiles give you manpower or gold um, and you need to place them and use them within a few rounds because you rarely get those um, resources for the big uh, for the big gun tiles very very quickly. I'm also pretty sure that one of my buildings cost one stone that provided one manpower to any unit yet another building cost two stone that provided me with one manpower to a specific magic unit. It seemed a bit redundant to have the increased in cost for a more specific type of roll. Um, perhaps it should have been the other way around. Um, the board itself is a little bland but to me as, as soon as you put the tiles on you, you kind of forget about this anyway. Um, regardless it's quite fun even though there is a lot of luck involved. I do like Games Workshop products um, and games with their license. Um, it's a nice filler game, better at four player than solo. It does appear semi-cooperative as you can help out other factions um, to prevent your tiles from being destroyed or decide not to if it means that you get advantage uh, for some influence somehow, which is kind of fun. Uh, but the game does generally end when the final assault takes place, which can crop up really, really quickly, depending on which enemy you're playing and which Warcry tile you're having. Lastly, there is a lot of replay value here um, for such a light game. There are three enemies, each with their own four levels of difficulty, meaning you have 12 slightly varied enemies to play against. Um, on top of that, there are six factions, and each of those have different numbers of units and buildings within their 20 tile stack, um, plus a different number of monsters and leaders within each tile, depending on that faction. Um, also, each faction has, has four unique um, aspects tiles that each provide a different skill. Um, and therefore, when I calculated this, to play all four levels of each of the three enemies using each of the six factions using all aspects um, is actually 288 games. I'm not even going to contemplate to try and figure out the, uh, the multiplayer replay value here. But anyway, having over... 1000 various combinations uh, to play this game is not going to put it on my top 10 uh, by a long shot. However, it's short and sweet. My kid does um, enjoy playing this with me and so it will stay on my shelf for the time being. It can be a bit overwhelming for him where there are lots of tiles on the board and he's got to scan around um, to look for the resources or the abilities in combat um, whilst he's playing, but we just have to be patient. Um, but we still have a fun game, win or lose. Um, so that's my uh, my playthrough and review of Warhammer Rise of Andalore. I hope you enjoyed it, especially seeing as I lost. Uh, if you have any if you have any comments or you played this and you agree or disagree, please leave them below. I I'd love to read them. Um, but thanks for watching. This is Ninja Geek. Cheers.